Rejoice and be glad, for today the Lord has made. We are on the 27th of June, 2018, and we got our, our round, kind of like uh, Laban Schmull of uh, Mount of uh, all of the Zeus Bondus bender there. We changed our hat today, so we're, we're trying something a little bit different. As you can see, uh, what we're thinking about as uh, something that's been on my heart for a long time, long time. And I don't think I've, I've said it, or maybe I have, but this, I actually wanted to do a, a video where I can put it out with, with the, the Spirit of the Lord has been laying on my heart. And uh, like I said, I, I'm one of those people, I like discussion. I don't like debates and I don't like argument. But I do enjoy a good discussion. A discussion is we're both wrong, we're both right. And if you have a discussion, well, you know what? Truth comes out, okay? But if you're going to have a debate or an argument, it's somebody's right and somebody's wrong. But if you go into a discussion, you're looking for the truth. You're not looking to exalt yourself or to say, I'm right and you're wrong, or you're, you're right and, gee, I was wrong. And, you know, it's like, no, we're looking for the truth. And I think that's what if we comfort one another and we come together looking under the, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we can do that. So, Father, I'm going to make a little prayer here. And, and Lord, calm me down. Let your spirit come, the Holy Spirit, the Oro Kakadesh. And, Lord, just give me the uh, the unction and the, and the, the guidance I require that uh, I can uh, present this, uh, this concept that I believe the Holy Spirit has been in my heart for a while, and it's time to bring it out and lay it on the table. So that the body of Christ can chew on it and we can uh, maybe have a nice discussion on it. And sit, or just sit there and add it to uh, maybe another idea that uh, maybe that's what the Bible is trying to get. That this is a hidden meeting that uh, maybe uh, you want to be brought out. I ask it in uh, the Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach's name, the Jesus Christ, the Lord, the Savior. Amen. So Abraham's sacrifice of Isaac, it has always bothered me. And I start with Genesis 22. And 22 is where the Spirit took me. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. Wow. And said unto him, Abraham. And Abraham said, and he, and he said, Behold, here I am. <laughs> Can you see that? I mean, just Abraham's like, Well, here, Lord, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac. And that, that's always bothered me. It's like, wait a second, what happened to Ishmael? I know the Hagar, but he's saying that he only recognizes Isaac because that's what he was told to do with Sarah, his wife. So it's interesting that the scriptures, if we have not noticed, he's only saying, Take thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. And offer him there for a burnt offering unto one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. And you know, notice I'm putting here uh, the th a depiction of a picture that is the third temptation. Okay, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Okay. <clears throat> Matthew 4, which is exactly what I just showed you. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. Okay. And says unto him, If thou be, maybe, if thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angel charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou uh, dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written, and this, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not tempt. Wait a second. Hold, hold on a second here. Whoa. Whoa. Put the brakes on. Let's, let's, uh, that God did tempt Abraham, but wait a second. And, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Yet God is tempting him. Now you see why I'm putting this third temptation here? Is this really God who is speaking? 
let's take, oh, let's, okay, so thou shalt not tempt, okay? So let's do it again. Matthew 4, again the devil take him up into an exceedingly high mountain, show him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. And he saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. What? And then Jesus said unto him, Get thee hand, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him shalt thou serve. There's the third temptation that I had there. He shows himself as God, declares himself to be God, exalting himself even above God, shows himself as an angel of light as well. Therefore, what I'm saying, if we come back, that God, and there should be a small g, and that the Bible is, is really showing us is that the temptation of Abraham was to take his son and murder him. Let's, let's go a little bit farther, okay? Thou shalt serve. Okay, so let's go. And then the Matthew 4, then the devil will take him to a host thing, and for he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. Okay, so this is what the, the devil has said. Okay? So what the devil has said as we looked at the angel concerning thee, and Abraham stretched forth his lines, if we go back to Genesis 22, 10, and Abraham stretched forth his, his, his hand, took the knife, okay, and this is one of those, where it sits there, it's that one edge side, okay, and what I think he did, is he took the knife, and he, right here, like this, and Abraham went to, and then as he went to maybe turn the knife around, Guess what happens? And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And Abraham said, Here I am. <laughs> okay. This is a cowboy's knife from uh, Colorado. Truth is never ending and lie, or truth is everlasting and lies are never ending. That's one of the cowboy wisdom I got from him. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Uh, Lonnie Schultz. Uh, and, uh, so we sit there, and he took the knife, and the angel of the Lord called up unto him, and said, Abraham, and he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know thou fearest God. In other words, the angel came and said, Hey, look, we know you fear God, but seest thou thou, how, thou, thou not with, uh, withheld thy son, thy only son from me? And don't make him a sacrifice for me. Okay, we could say that uh, that what I'm seeing is in John's eyes. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? Okay, John 8:43, 44, 4. You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer, Cain and Abel. Okay, from the beginning, Adam, and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. What the Spirit is saying is that Abraham was listening to this, a liar, Lucifer. He wanted to kill Isaac, because if he kills Isaac, there is no Jacob. No Jacob, there is no Israel. Therefore, the discussion I would would love to have is, are we seeing, maybe it, maybe this is a hidden meeting. Could we say that uh, Abraham being faithful to do what God said, was that true? Is that something that we, if, if God says, tempt not the Lord thy God. In other words, don't put yourself in harm's way. Don't do stupid things. Don't jump out of airplanes, you know, with with a parachute, you know, I mean, or, or sit there and... and Take risks that uh, that are high. You don't put yourself in harm's way. You don't tempt the Lord that he has to send angels to protect you. And yet God, in the beginning there, that God did tempt Abraham? Or was that Lucifer did tempt Abraham? If Lucifer showing himself as God on that third temptation, right there I had it, if here, just like he's saying to Jesus, all these kingdoms, all these people, 
Okay, I rule over, I'm in charge of, I will let you be in charge of them. Of course, Jesus would be in charge, on, would have then had to bow to Lucifer. And that's what the Pope, what everyone does to the Pope. They bow to the Pope, they're bowing to Lucifer. So, what I'm seeing is what the Spirit is saying is that this was an, this was an attack. This was an attack to take Isaac and to uh, make God a liar. This was because if God is a liar, then what, how can we trust anything God says? Because Isaac is dead. And because Isaac was dead, that's kind of like the grandfather, the paradox of the time traveler. If you go back in time and you killed your grandfather, well, then you just killed your dad because your grandfather didn't have uh, your dad yet. So you, how are you going to get born if your, your dad's dead because your grandfather was dead? So the question here is, are we really looking at this, or could we actually say that this has a different meaning as well, and that it could be a twofold meaning? God could say this is a hidden secret that you're you're seeing, but you, what? And the devil taketh him up into exceedingly high places because what? Right here, you. Why do you not understand my speech, is Jesus? Even because you cannot hear my words, you can't hear what I'm. Maybe I'm going to say or what I have been saying, because you are your father the devil. And the lust of your father you will do. Corruption. All right, he was a murderer. What was that offering of Isaac for God? It was taking and making a murderer of Abraham, murder your son for a God? I don't think so. God doesn't ask us to murder our sons and daughters. He sent his son who took death, no one took life from him. He laid down his life and took back his life that he had laid down. No one took his life and nobody gave it back. God came, Jesus Christ came to declare who the Father is. That if we believe in Christ, that he came and took our sins on that cross, was buried and rose again, then we have an everlasting covenant by faith. Okay? So what I want you to see is what the, Satan's fall is that he is a liar from the beginning. He was a murderer from the beginning. That Isaac, the sacrifice of Isaac, was an attack on uh, God to take Isaac and kill Isaac so there would be no uh, Jacob. If without Jacob, there's no Israel. And God's a liar then. And God's not a liar. But you see how the Satan, by his own word, he says that an angel would come. And what did we see? his angels, okay, and the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, 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 lay not thy hand upon the lad. In other words, God did exactly what he tempted Jesus with and sit there, the angel did come and the angel did take charge and the angel did speak on behalf of God that he should not hurt the child and that there was a ram then provided for them and they did uh, sacrifice that ram for the Lord God, making a burnt offering unto the Lord. So, that is what I wanted uh, to see. And, of course, with every uh, fruit that I produce for the Lord, which is his fruit, not mine, if we do the ABCs, which is J.D. Farag of uh, Calvary Chapel, is Romans 3, we start out with 25. 325, whom hath set forth to be a propitiating through faith in his blood. It is faith in the blood by which we are saved. The faith that Christ shed his blood for our sins, for without the shedding of blood, there is no remissions of sin. Okay, and then we can go to Romans 10, that if thou confess with the Lord, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, shedding of the blood, resurrection of the dead, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth gives confession, that whosoever shall call upon the Lord shall be saved. Verse 14 is the next one, as J.D. has not read, as well as Romans 10.1, he's talking to Israel. And verse 14 says, But you cannot call to him whom you do not believe, because you don't believe, because you don't know who he is. So this is Romans 10, to me, Romans is really showing that you first got to start with the Romans 3. It's the blood. The blood and the resurrection, which is Paul's gospel. Paul's gospel is, Wolverine brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, good news, 
which I preached unto you, what also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which you are saved. Okay. If you keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless you believed in vain, if you didn't take it to heart. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. I, Saul of Tarsus, went to the cross and became Paul the Apostle. I, who was a murderer, was forgiven of my sins, washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, to a, nailed to a cross, to a tree, shed his blood, and that he was buried and rose again the third day. So you have the Romans road. Okay, you can take the Romans road. Start with Romans 3, the faith in the blood. Then confess him, with, he was uh, resurrected from the grave, which is ex exactly a mirror of this. And what do I have? Well, I've got my building blocks as well. I got A, B, B, A. A is admit you're a sinner. B is the blood shed for our sins, okay? Uh, buried and rose again the third day. B is the second B is believe in your heart that, and trust in Christ, okay? And Christ alone, okay? And then we come into the A, ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart. Okay, speak it with your mouth. And what do I see? But Abba, which is Aramaic, which means Father. John 3, 16, Abba, so loved the world. Father, so loved the world, he sent his son to die on a cross, shedding his blood. He was buried and he rose again the third day. Amen. Sinner's Prayer, 1 Corinthians 15, Gospel 1 through 4, or do the Romans roll, but Make sure because you know it's talking to the to the to the Jewish people, the nation of Israel. Uh, use your Romans 3:25, and then then having faith in the blood, you know why you're calling you because it's the blood that was shed. Faith in that blood would takes your sin from you. Okay, not just his name as in the Old Testament. Uh, Peter with, uh, was told to go to the uh, house of Israel only in the first parts of Acts, but after uh, Stephen is uh, crucified, his faith in the cross in the blood okay there is a different gospel like i did one called the two two gospels are real there are there are two gospels okay and there are two gospels there's the four gospels and the gospel of grace please check that out so heavenly father i come to you in prayer asking for the forgiveness of my sins i confess with my mouth and believe with my heart that yeshua which means salvation god sent salvation jesus is your son that he died on the cross at Calvary, that I have been forgiven and have eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. Father, I believe that Yeshua, Jesus, rose from the dead and ask you right now, come into my life and be my personal Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins and will worship you all the days of my life because your word is truth. I confess with my mouth that I am no longer dead. The wages of sin is death and hell. Okay, so we who are dead from sin are now alive. I am no longer dead but alive and cleansed by the blood of Jesus. His blood has res his resurrection has resurrected me from the dead. Nicodemus was told to be born again because the house of Israel is spiritually dead. That's why they rejected Jesus Christ because they have not the spiritual eyes to see nor the uh, uh, eyes to see or the heart to receive them because they don't believe in Christ. That is why uh, verse 14 of Romans 14 is, and you can't believe on him whom you don't know. And you don't know him because you can't believe on him, because you haven't been told about him. You have no preacher because you put to, you're stoning everyone like Stephen. So he's, it's a reprimand to the house of Israel. But if you use it for the, for the Romans road for salvation, please use the Romans 3.25. It's the blood. It's the blood that takes the sin from us. Without the shedding of that blood, there's no remission of sin. Half the gospel is just the resurrection of verse 10 there, that God raised him from the dead. That's half. Without the blood, you're, you're missing the whole point. It's the blood. After uh, Stephen's had stoned, they rejected the Father uh, with the prophets. They rejected the Son himself, Christ. And now they were rejecting the Holy Spirit in Stephen, who was filled with the Holy Spirit preaching to them what they needed to do to repent, to receive and go into Jacob's uh, uh, sorrow, which would have been the book of Revelation for the seven years with the man of sin coming up and testing the house of Israel to go through the fire for the seven years. The body of Christ would have been taken out, the apostle which Paul is given. So, there it is. So, we in Jesus, Yeshua's name, I pray, okay? I tell someone, 
I have a link down below where you can sit there and you click on it and you can go over to my salvation page and say I just gave my life to Jesus Christ and I will witness for you and uh, I give you that uh, what uh, uh, acknowledgement that uh, I will stand before Jesus and say yes that person uh, gave their life they, they came to it and they uh, asked Jesus and asked you Lord to come into their life it's a personal you get sealed once saved but see the the covenant with Israel is everlasting covenant with Abraham. The covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is everlasting. God's not going to break it. Israel has broken it by uh, getting despiritualized, and that which they're spiritually blind right now. That's why they need to be born again. We, by faith, is what we're taught with Paul the Apostle. Not by works, but by faith in Christ alone. What Jesus did with that blood, the shedding, taking our place on that cross. That we are, I sit there and given an opportunity, a gift from God the Father. That if we use our faith in believing that Jesus went to that cross, died for our sin, was buried and rose again, that's what keeps us. And our salvation is He then will make us uh, righteous for the Lord up until that day when He comes. The people who lose their salvation, who deny Christ, that is during the tribulation. If they take the mark of the beast, they are denying Christ. Therefore, they uh, have um, made a choice that leads them into the lake of fire. They will have to do that. You don't have to do that. If you come now before the tribulation starts and the harpazo takes place or the Christ comes for his body, there's neither Jew nor Gentile, one body. We who believe are in the body of Christ. And Christ now is in us. That is the Holy. That's the Comforter. That's the Pentecost that comes to us, that comes in seals our heart for eternity that we are bought by a price with the, uh, the blood of Jesus Christ in his life that he laid it down no one took it from him and then he took it back up and sits at the right hand of the father and the day will come when the father will turn to his son and he will say go get your body I don't think there's a, a, a thing needed in the scriptures that because Israel had to have the sign they had to have the Pentecost they had the Passover and all that for Jesus when he was walking the earth to fulfill for the house of Israel. For the last three feasts of Israel, for the Feast of Trumpets and the Tabernacles and all, I believe it's for Israel during the time of the tribulation, which is uh, Jacob's sorrow, and it's for them for his second coming. How about that? That's another one. See? So, sacrifice of Isaac was really who? Satan wanting Abraham to kill his son Isaac, so that there would be no Jacob. Without Jacob, there would be no Israel. God's a liar then. But God, you see, by the very words that uh, the serpent, uh, the devil has said, that the angels would come and uh, keep you, at least you dash, be hurt. Well, guess what? An angel came and, and saved the, the life of Isaac and stopped Abraham from making life. Stopping Abraham, tempting Abraham being tempted he was stopped so I think that the temptation of Abraham was was not by God the Father but by Lucifer showing himself that he is the ruler that's say that's why I showed you that the third temptation that he's ruling this earth by the authority that he has by having taken it from Adam that he sits there having robbed humanity he stands as God shows himself as God even exhorts himself above that which is God but you see, the God sit there, I think, is showing us right there, is that that was not me. That was someone that's a $43 bill. He was showing himself as God. There may be some of the other things that uh, uh, in the Bible, maybe they're, they're sit there, they're, <coughs> they're, or maybe God is showing that uh, the one who sits there puts uh, the, the sword in the hand. Because I sit there and I read where the Exodus and the, those Israelites who didn't want to follow Moses in the uh, wilderness, uh, they, they, Moses drew a line. And those who crossed over the line, what happened? The earth opened up and God swallowed all those who didn't want Moses to be the leader. Uh, God doesn't need me to kill someone. God took care of the problem right there himself. So again, I guess it would be the third uh, uh, discussion. Is that really God in the Old Testament saying take the swords and go in and kill and do all that stuff? That would be an interesting discussion. I'm 
talking too fast, I'm breathing too fast. So he's let me know, okay, he's saying, calm down and, and say thank you for listening. I pray that uh, the body, we sit there and have a good discussion on it. But uh, it's just a, a, a something to, to look at. Uh, from what I'm seeing, God does not tempt. Tempt not the Lord guy. In other words, don't, don't put yourself in harm's way and tempt the Lord. Neither will God tempt us. I don't think God's going to tempt us. But I sure can see that the father of all lies, a murderer from the beginning, would definitely try to trick us into uh, making human sacrifice to him. So, Maranatha, which is come quickly, Lord, and Shalom. May the peace of the Lord be with you. May this um, message uh, edify and glorify and have uh, a good discussion with it, I believe. And uh, Adonai, Yeshua, Hamashiach, same, I pray. Amen.